Being put behind bars is a punishment in itself, but what if the prisoners are subjected to sexual assault, exploitation, forced labor, and inhumane living conditions? This has been the reality for many prisoners in the state of Alabama, where several cases of slavery in prisons have been reported. And you know what? This slavery in the prisons is still ongoing, and the authorities seem to have closed their eyes. So, what exactly is happening in the prisons of Alabama and what are the consequences of this modern day slavery? Keep watching because we'll be sharing everything in detail, supported by facts and figures. According to an investigation by the U.S. Department of Justice, Alabama routinely breaches the constitutional rights of those imprisoned. Within these facilities, incidents of homicide and sexual abuse are alarmingly frequent as if it is the norm. Many inmates live in a harsh world where weapons and dangerous drugs are common. They often face extortion, threats, and violent attacks. Some inmates have even reported being tied up for long times without any warning from the guards. This terrible situation is made worse by a lack of staff, poor management, and wrongdoing by officials. As a result, many prisoners are left vulnerable to violence and other kinds of mistreatment. We've got some alarming figures to shed light on this situation. Data from Alabama Appleseed shows that the number of inmates reporting assaults has doubled over the last decade, rising from just under 1,000 in 2013 to nearly 2,000 in 2023. Attacks on staff have also seen a troubling increase, with incidents rising from 363 to almost 500 during the same period. Homicides within the prison system have increased from 3 to 13. The prison population has decreased slightly from about 25,000 in March 2013 to around 20,000 last March, yet the violence remains the same. The mortality rate in Alabama's prisons is particularly concerning, standing at 1,370 deaths per 100,000 inmates, which is five times higher than the national average of 330 per 100,000. These figures are hard to believe, but unfortunately, they are real. Today, the state of Alabama is estimated to make over $450 million each year from prison labor, both within the prison walls and in the surrounding communities. Many inmates who work in prison jobs are paid way less than the minimum wage, and in Alabama, like four other states, some do not receive any pay at all. For those who do get paid, the rates range from $0.86 cents to $3.45 per day, as reported by the Prison Policy Initiative. So. What is causing this alarming situation? The aging prison facilities in Alabama are severely outdated and simply cannot accommodate the increasing number of inmates entering the system. Originally built to house individuals for short periods while they were rehabilitated, these prisons now serve a different purpose. Over time, the focus shifted from rehabilitation to detaining inmates for extended durations. This change has led to a system that prioritizes keeping individuals locked up for as long as possible while seeking ways to profit from their imprisonment. Making money is the primary goal of Alabama's prison system, and this has resulted in overcrowded facilities and inadequate resources for inmates. Here's how it works. Prisons in Alabama are often situated in communities where local residents rely heavily on jobs created by the prison system. Inmates working these jobs receive no benefits, such as bereavement leave, sick days, or personal days. And guess what? If they refuse to work, they often face harsh punishments, including solitary confinement, being transferred to a prison far from their families, losing phone privileges, and losing credits for good behavior, which could extend the time they have to serve. That's how the prison system in Alabama maintains control and continues to exploit inmates for financial gain. Almost every year, the Alabama State Legislature has considered holding a special session to address the deadly conditions within its prison system. However, these special sessions often do not bring about real change. The main focus for Alabama seems to be making money from keeping inmates locked up instead of helping them get ready to return to society. This is especially clear when we look at how few inmates get parole. Out of 100 inmates who could be released early, only about five are actually granted freedom. The prison system in Alabama is run like a business that wants to make as much money as possible by keeping all its beds filled. If there are empty beds, the state loses money. The federal government has been trying to push Alabama to make changes through threats of lawsuits and other pressure, but meaningful progress is still very slow. Unfortunately, 
Many of these jobs come at the expense of the inmates, who are left vulnerable as the community thrives on their confinement. The Alabama Department of Corrections uses funding and legal incentives from initiatives aimed at successful prison reform to increase the number of correctional officers. However, these efforts face challenges due to a high turnover rate among staff. Many new officers leave their jobs quickly because of long hours, low pay, and the dangers they encounter. Even today, the food served in Alabama prisons is often too small, similar to what you would expect for young children in elementary school, which leaves many inmates feeling hungry and desperate. Those without money to buy extra food from the commissary may try to go back for more, but this can lead to being kicked out of the kitchen or facing violence from guards or other inmates. Any leftover food is usually thrown away or sold by kitchen inmates who do not get paid for their work and feel forced to sell food just to get by. Many of these inmates live in terrible conditions, lacking basic items and hygiene products. They often sleep on hard floors, shower only sporadically, and may use drugs to cope with their harsh situations. The problem of drug use is widespread, and it seems that corrupt officers help bring drugs into the prisons. Overdoses happen so frequently that the Alabama Department of Corrections has stopped keeping track of inmate deaths. When an overdose occurs, other inmates must take action themselves, grabbing stretchers and Narcan to help save their friends. Here's a case that highlights modern-day slavery in the prisons in Alabama. During a recent committee hearing at the Alabama State House, more than a dozen family members and advocates gathered to voice their concerns. Senator Clyde Chambliss, the committee chair, urged everyone to remain respectful while sharing their experiences, emphasizing the importance of a constructive dialogue. Among those who spoke was Cindy Hamilton, visibly emotional as she recounted her son's four years in prison, a time during which he was subjected to assaults, torture, and financial extortion. She also expressed her opposition to the newly passed Deputy Brad Johnson Act, which limited the amount of good behavior time that inmates could earn toward early release. Here's what she said. My son has been mentally and physically tortured for four years, and in January of this year, corrupt officers were given the authority to punish and take good time away. My son has no violent charges, and he was going to be released in April. All of his good time was taken, and now the state says he'll be released in February of 2035. Another heart-wrenching story comes from Trevika Stanley, who faced an unimaginable situation. Just a day after her mother passed away, she found herself struggling to cope with her grief. Despite her desperate request for a day off from her unpaid job at Julia Tutwiler Prison for Women in Wetumpka, Alabama, prison officials denied her plea. At just 32 years old, Trevika was still expected to work as part of a garbage crew, collecting bagged and unbagged trash throughout the prison. Reflecting on her experience, she shared with Capital B, My brain was stuck. I couldn't think straight. Trevika, who had been incarcerated since she was 21, expressed her desire to work and earn money in a meaningful way, not simply performing menial tasks in such a suffocating environment. Now speaking from Montgomery Women's Facility, she continues to grapple with the harsh realities of prison life while mourning her loss. So, even today, we see that the prison system in Alabama is the same as it was in the 1800s, a system built on exploitation and oppression rather than rehabilitation and justice. The issues of corrupt officers, inadequate living conditions, and the exploitation of prison labor demonstrate the urgent need for reform. But honestly, we think there's no one who would come forward to fix these problems and make the necessary changes. Let us know in the comments what you think about the state of prisons in Alabama and what steps can be taken to bring about meaningful change. If you found the video informative, please like and share it to spread awareness about this pressing issue. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.